And welcome back once again to TIA 2014, day two of our three-day conference on network on the on the network of the future uh, in Dallas, Texas. With us in the Dell TI Now studio is Thierry Klein. He's network energy research program leader at Bell Labs. And Thierry, welcome back. Thanks. Thanks so, for having me. It's always great to talk to you. I know you just came off a, a keynote presentation mm -hmm. at the TIA 2014 uh, yeah. conference. Uh, quickly, a quick summary about the keynote address. So uh, yeah, I talked a little bit about uh, the importance for energy uh, in the industry, not just from an environmental perspective, but also really from, an, from a technical perspective, from a deployment of networks perspective, as well as an economic perspective. And then I really tried to highlight uh, that there are some challenges in, in accomplishing energy efficiency in the networks, but at the same time there are also opportunities. And uh, so sort of the thesis of the talk was a little bit around zero energy. Can you have communication networks with all the applications, all of our um, services that we want to provide, but is it possible to do that at zero energy? Is that an, uh, a completely crazy vision or is that something that we can do about it? And I tried to argue that it's actually possible. It's a research challenge, there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, there's a lot of work that we've already done that's going in the direction of, of zero energy. Thierry, I want to touch on a few of those topics that you just mentioned in your uh, summary. Um, I want to start with energy, ch our challenges around energy, uh, not environmental, but you've talked about that before, um, but I want to talk about some of the technical and economical challenges. Mm -hmm. So one example for, is, uh, is the deployment of networks. As we get more and more traffic in the network, we see densification of networks. So for example, small cells. We'll end up deploying a lot of small cells to handle the capacity of the, and the, the traffic demands in wireless networks. But if you imagine you deploy 30, 40, 50,000 small cells in, in a country like the US, you have to put them in places where you really need to need the capacity where people are. But it's going to be very challenging to run power cables to the 50,000 small cells, for example. So that's where availability, access to power, um, could become a limiting factor of you not being, being able to deploy the, the small cells where you want them, but you may not, might end up deploying them where you have power, as opposed to where you need them from a wireless uh, perspective. And uh, so that's maybe a technical challenge where the deployment constraints uh, come from, uh, from, a, from an energy perspective. In terms of the economics, we know that the large operators spend several hundred million dollars or euros on, uh, on the energy bill. Uh, energy co the network is about 70, 90 percent of that energy bill, and it's growing. Uh, cost of energy is increasing, so they should expect, uh, if nothing changes, the, that the energy bill is going to, uh, to increase in the next, uh, next decade or so. So that's where energy really hits the, uh, the operational expense in, of service providers. Uh, Thierry, as we all know, the Bell Labs is uh, known for their innovative technologies. Uh, there's a new tool uh, called GWatt, which actually measures energy but allows you to interchange scenarios. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, GWatt is, uh, is an interactive tool that we, um, we developed in Bell Labs. We just launched it in the uh, beginning of April. And it's really a mind-sharing tool on where the energy is consumed in the network from the home enterprise networks all the way to data center networks to with wireless core network in between. And we're really trying to highlight the hot zones in the network from, an, from a network energy consumption perspective. And then also it allows you to play some what if scenarios. What if traffic changes in certain uh, percentages? You can play what if scenarios over, over several years. Uh, it also allows you to play some uh, technology scenarios. What if you change a 3G for 4G? What if you deploy small cells? What if you go from copper to fiber? And you can really see then the impact on a, on a regional or on a global basis from an energy consumption, energy uh, cost, as well as carbon footprint perspective. So it's a, it's a nice interactive uh, tool, more of a mind-sharing tool to see where the energy is in the network and how we can affect it by making certain technology choices. And uh, it's, um, if you allow me a little plug, it's available at gwatt.net and it's freely available for anybody to, uh, to look at, play with. Uh, Thierry, I think you're the, a, a great person to ask this question to. Um, are we on a path of sustainability as we deal with this compounded traffic data, that, or data, uh, data traffic that uh, the network has to deal with year over year? Yeah, so, so I believe we're, we're not on a sustainable path, primarily because the traffic is growing at a much rapid, pa rapid pace compared to the energy efficiency gain. So traffic is growing between 10x and 100x, but our energy efficiencies are not increasing at the same level. So we see a growth in energy consumption uh, with the costs that, that are associated with it. So uh, where we are right now, it's not sustainable, I believe. Uh, we talked in our pre-show discussion about zero power. You said uh, one day we may or may not be able to run all of our applications on zero power. How do you define zero power, first of all? So for me, there are three, three aspects of zero power. The first one is zero grid power. Could you get the network completely off the grid 
uh, of an electric grid and power it only by renewable energy sources. And we know data centers already use a lot of renewables, uh, wind power, solar power, and so forth. But we haven't seen that really in the, the wireless or fixed access networks. And uh, so if you can, uh, can get it on locally renewable energy sources, you don't rely on having the connection. You save the cost on connecting your, your network, for example, your wireless network, on, on connecting it to a power grid. Um, actually, you should know that the, the cost of providing a backhaul and the cost of providing the power connection to small cells are the two dominant factors in the cost of deployment of small cells. So if you can cut those wires, you will really save on, uh, on the cost of uh, deployment. So zero grid power is one of the, the dimensions. The other aspects are uh, zero wasted power. We spend a lot of power right now on equipment that doesn't do any useful work. Uh, energy is consumed when, even when there's no traffic going through the network or through the equipment, and that's obviously wasteful. We spend a lot of effort on cooling, and cooling is just an overhead for the, uh, for the network, for the equipment. So if we can reduce the waste, wasted power, then we'll get uh, more efficient networks. And then the third part is can we get the uh, zero energy per bit, which is maybe more of a stretch, I mean, not strictly speaking zero energy per bit, but can we get maximum efficiency out of the energy that we spend? Can we do more, um, more data processing, more data storage, more data transmission, uh, and really improve the energy efficiency? And uh, we're far from the theoretical limits on energy efficiency, so strictly speaking, we may not get to zero energy per bit, but we can certainly improve the energy per bit quite significantly. Thierry, uh, I want to ask you about what the next frontier is for energy consumption and how is Green Touch going to deal with that challenge? So uh, Green Touch, we still have a year to go with Green Touch until 2015 where we're quite busy with uh, completing some of the research projects that we have ongoing, updating our Green Meter study. Um, we'll also look at uh, some new technology demonstrations, some key technologies that, that make up the Green Meter results. Uh, beyond that, we think that one uh, frontier that has not been looked at is energy and the Internet of Things. A lot of people talk about the Internet of Things. Uh, it will certainly happen, uh, and if it happens at the large scale of 50, 100 billion devices, we haven't really understood the energy impact of that. And not just how we power the devices and the sensors and machines, but also how do we handle the information that's coming off of these machines. Because if they have to be low power, because I believe that you can't run power lines to 100 billion devices, you can't walk around and change batteries on 100 billion devices. So you need these devices to be fundamentally low power and very limited functionality, which means that a lot of the, the work and the processing, the storage of the information is done in the network, in the cloud. And we haven't really understood the energy impact of doing that at, at huge scale, uh, several orders of magnitude more than, than we have today. Um, and if it happens, and there is an energy impact, how do we do it in the most efficient way? So you'll bring in SDN, NFE concepts with Internet of Things to handle that information tornado in the, in the most efficient way. Thierry, we hope to uh, speak to you a number of times before 2015, um, and we appreciate you uh, being here, and your, your information is always very interesting to us. So thank, thank you very much. My pleasure. All right, Thierry, thank you very much. And thanks for joining us for our coverage of TIA's Network of the Future conference. The Dell TI Now studio will be streaming live throughout the conference. You can view our live stream and all of our programming at TINow.org. So long.